Christian Kiefer. I'm a photographer. I've been a photographer for just about 20 years now and um, one of the things that has always inspired me has been aviation and uh, the retro era from the 1940s is just uh, it's very classy and uh, something that has uh, I've always been uh, kind of wishing we could sort of get back to as, as a society. So one of the uh, things I did was uh, you know I shot uh, many different kinds of photography and I'd worked in Hollywood movies and all that sort of thing but I, I really wanted to be able to kind of control my own uh, destiny with my project so uh, I started off just kind of doing some images uh, with aviation which was all from warbirds. Uh, World War II fighter planes have uh, just been something part of my life for since I was a little kid my dad and I would sit there and build models and I learned all the different types of aircraft that were utilized in all the theaters of World War II. It was real natural for me to sort of use it as a subject, and uh, I get real excited when I get around these airplanes. So, uh, and of course, uh, as I grew up, I noticed the nose art. You know, you get to a certain age and you don't miss that as a guy. So, uh, that was always sexy to me, uh, and it still is. Uh, and, you know, what what what's going on in, in the pop culture right now is uh, is a little bit too gratuitous for my taste, and I'd like to be able to bring sexy back in a very wholesome fashion. Hi, I'm Mira Branham. I'm from Orlando, Florida. I did the pinup shoot today. I was contacted on Model Make to do it, and it sounded awesome because I love the pinup era. I think it's great, fun, and classy. I've been modeling professionally for about five years. It's something I've always wanted to do my whole life. I started doing acting and theater and dance when I was three years old. And so I just kind of kept on building on that. And then when I was about 20, I got into it professionally, started modeling for different places around Orlando and in Florida. So I really enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I think uh, one of the things we found is that uh, with the release of our calendars, uh, we're finding that people really, they actually really want this. Uh, even the guys, you know, they're coming to me and they're saying just, just leaving a little bit to the imagination is, is kind of uh, what they're after. They've kind of seen it all out there with the internet kind of, uh, you know, really uh, exploiting women kind of. Uh, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're getting back to an age when uh, a little bit to the imagination was actually something that uh, left you waiting for something. And, uh, and of course the nose art that you see here on Precious Metal, uh, it's just one example of, uh, of how the men in uh, World War II were, were sending that message not only to the enemy that uh, flew past them, but to uh, the morale of all the men that were actually in these flying machines that uh, they were fighting for those women back home. And uh, to me, that's a very romantic idea. And uh, I'm kind of a romantic at heart. So I think it, uh, when I combined it, the two, um, took some of my fashion experience from the kind of photography I've done in the past, and, and then just combined it with sort of this aviation uh, niche that I really didn't see anybody working in too much. Uh, it's kind of interesting because when I, when I started to research where I could get the aircraft, uh, it was kind of uh, nice to find that there was a community that is just dedicated to keeping these airplanes flying still. And so what one of the things that we want to achieve uh, with Warbird Pinup Girls is that uh, uh, we want to help contribute back by bringing some attention to preservation of these wonderful airplanes. Now, precious metal here behind me is not a stock, modify, uh, a stock P-51 from the war, but we also wanted to show kind of how the history progressed and how the men took those airplanes after the, the conflict and did neat things with them in the culture and became uh, racing planes. So it was a very special aircraft. We, we were very blessed to, to have Tom offer to let us use it. So uh, with the modified uh, uh, prop in the front, which is kind of a very unique aspect of the aircraft, we thought that would really make some dynamic photography. And so, but we still got the, back to the traditional pinup girl that we put up on, on the aircraft. And that's what we intend to do with all, all of our editions of Warbird pinup girls. I love it. I just love being in these outfits. They're super cute. I love being working with the planes. I was nervous because it was the first time I'd ever done pinup work. So I wanted to make sure I was doing poses right. but. It was good. He gave good direction and I was able to follow him really well. I think the most challenging part was just with the sun there trying to look and not, not squint and probably just the movements of making sure that I was um, putting everything out that needed to be out. <laughs> Basically. We started off uh, in 2010 with the 2011 version 
which was all fighter planes. And uh, one of the other things that we do uh, at Warbird Pinup Girls is we only shoot on aircraft that are, are, are flight ready. But uh, uh, what happened was um, it, it, it gave me an opportunity to kind of expand the concept. Well, if we're working with uh, flight ready aircraft, uh, why not take uh, the photo shoot and, 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 and you know, actually uh, videotape that for a television program because then what we can do is uh, incorporate uh, the pilot and the organization and uh, the, the actual aircraft in some live aviation demos. I mean, what could be more exciting than that? Uh, so, you know, our, our show is going to consist of uh, the creation of the pinup girl, uh, which will go through everything from the casting process to uh, uh, the wardrobe, which uh, my beautiful wife helps me with, and she does a wonderful job. I've found that uh, even though I, I think I'm, I'm always great at everything I do, uh, sometimes a woman's touch is actually what's really needed. Let me, let me just tell you guys, um, you know, generally know how I work. I have sort of a vision of the shot that I want right. to achieve first, and then we kind of go into freewheeling it after that. So the one thing I do want to get is something more like this because she's, I'm going to try and place her on the back uh, uh, elevator, which is the little wings on the back of the airplane, not the main wings. Okay. I'm going to see if I can put her up there. I don't have permission for that right now, but we're going to talk to Tom okay. about maybe putting her up there, which is going to be precarious because yeah, she, well that, we don't yeah. want anybody to fall That's right kind of cool though because it's different than what we But if doing. she was in some kind of a position like this right here mm -hmm. and leaning against the main back fin, it's going to be this kind of setup here. Okay. Okay. I don't know with the heels on if there would be. Well, I think she'll I'm be okay. Put the matting down when, when we get her up there. Okay. And so she can actually hopefully lean against the, the main stabilizer. Here, yeah. Okay? She can put her body up. Yeah. So imagine this together. Okay. And it'll be on this side likely too, okay? Because I'm going to be down here shooting this direction. And I want that big prop up in the front. Okay. Okay. So. Tammy, I really want you to, we're going to work it that, if I can get that position, I want to work it for quite a while. Okay. So what I'm saying is, every little accent you can give me, change up. Right. Do it. Her contribution of helping me choose the right kind of girls and the right kind of wardrobe has been uh, something that I, I, I would never give up looking back now because that, that's been a huge contribution to the success of making it authentic and that's one of the things that I really strive to do in all of my work is to do the real thing uh, you know just the way it was back then sometimes we might be just a little edgy but for the most part uh, it's just like what you saw in the airplanes in World War II um, getting back to nose art that's going to be another portion of our program we're going to elaborate on that we're going to talk about uh, how the nose art evolved through the different conflicts starting when aviation uh, was born uh, men used to uh, identify uh, weapons of war for centuries. Going back as far as the Roman times, they would paint uh, some kind of identifying uh, icon on their shields so that when we were in battle, they could look across out of their metal helmets and they could see that uh, there's the guy I know over there because there's the star or the animal on his shield. That's how nose art actually, oh, it's called heraldry is I believe how it's pronounced. And that is the, the, the uh, individuality of a weapon. So what it was used for in the Second World War really was to uh, boost morale for the men as they were in the air. They could also identify the aircraft they were flying with by the name or by the girl that was painted on it or by the cartoons they used at the time. And you know that, that stretched all the way back from those times up into the modern times. But that kind of art has sort of been a lost art now in our modern times, and our modern cultures. Men aren't allowed to do those things uh, on, on military aircraft. So it's a very special time. It's sort of the golden age. It's sort of a romantic period. And so that was a huge inspiration for me and my work. And we're going to elaborate a lot of that uh, on our television program. Uh, in this particular edition of Warbird Pinup Girls, I, I, I went back to uh, uh, one of the most successful fighter planes of all uh, time, actually, which is the P-51 Mustang. And obviously there's a, a big fan base for that uh, in the Warbird community. Uh, it's one of the draws that brings the crowds uh, into a lot of the air shows. It's one of the most exciting aircraft to watch. 
And one of the things you'll notice uh, with my program, instead of just my calendar, is you're going to get to hear it. And this aircraft makes a sound uh, that you can't, uh, you just can't get it anywhere else. Uh, any pilot will tell you when they hear a, a Merlin engine cranking, it's just a very, very exciting thing. And uh, when they get to throttle up and you get to see that aircraft leave the ground, uh, I'm always envious and always jealous. In the case of precious metal, uh, we have the Griffin engine, which is uh, even more monstrous and more exciting. Um, with the twin-bladed uh, counter-rotating prop two, which is a very uh, rarity even on the racing circuit, uh, the sound is even more overpowering than the uh, Merlins that came in the Mustangs from World War II. So, uh, this takes excitement to a brand new level, and I, I just can't wait to show my audience just how exciting this is going to be. And uh, Tom is a, just an amazing pilot, and you know he uh, he he becomes one with this machine. So um, come along for a ride, and uh, I, I think you're going to be really pleased that you did. My name is Tom Richard. I'm based in Kissimmee, Florida. I run Warbird Adventures in the Kissimmee Air Museum. We've been in operation now for 14 years and uh, only planning on getting bigger and better. Uh, I started together with a business partner, Graham Mizey, and uh, we've expanded into uh, helicopters and a fairly extensive exhibit now and air racing. It's what I always wanted to do. Um, wanted uh, to fly since I was a little kid, any way, shape, or form. When I uh, read a magazine about air racing in 1979. I was seven years old, decided that's what I was going to do when I grew up. Yes, I am the pilot and operator of Precious Metal, uh, based here in Kissimmee. We've, um, for many years, been trying to get into the unlimited field, and this was our ticket in. I was working on the old owner for quite a few years to let me have the airplane, and eventually we got our wish. And careful what you wish for, by the way. The aircraft was uh, on the scene in Reno for many years. It was built in 1989. Uh, flown and raced by Don Whittington, later on sold to Ron Baccarelli. He raced it for a few years and uh, then put in storage. We uh, took the airplane out of storage a year ago and uh, did extensive uh, repairs and restoration work to it, uh, mods to bring it up to speed to bring it to Reno 2011. This particular airplane is a modified P-51D. Uh, the firewall forward has been removed and replaced with a much larger Griffin power plant and contra-rotating propeller, which is probably the most distinct feature of the aircraft. In addition, the wings have been clipped, the systems have been modified, the canopies lowered and cut, the cockpits moved rearward, and so on. The uh, aircraft is uh, specifically built for racing. It's not good for anything else, just to go fast. We uh, found this aircraft uh, down in Placid Lakes, belonged to uh, Ron Baccarelli at the time, which is the second owner of the aircraft. I'm uh, the third operator of the machine, and it's been around since uh, 1989 was the first time it flew. As far as the racer is concerned, the P-51 has been very successful over the years, um, largely due to the late aerodynamics that came about uh, towards the end of the war, or middle part of the war, I should say, um, which enabled the aircraft to go quite fast. It's got a very, very slick wing. It's, it's got a small profile, very powerful engine, stock even and uh, it uh, turned out to be very successful in the racing circuit. Today, it's, uh, the fastest aircraft in Reno are indeed Mustangs. I always wanted to fly Warbirds. As a, uh, a kid, that was a, was a dream of mine, so uh, when I moved to the United States to uh, pursue aviation, that's the direction I was uh, aiming, and uh, I've been teaching now in T6s for many, many years, and uh, that naturally leads you into other Warbirds. Other than the obvious modification of replacing the power plant and clipping wings and cutting canopies and things of that sort, there's a lot of systems that are quite different. Um, for example, in order to run the high manifold pressures that we run, you have to run high octane gasoline, 160 to be specific. And in addition, 
in order to avoid something called detonation, we spray methanol and water into the uh, engine to cool the intake charge at a rate of three gallons a minute at power. So that system is quite special, uh, in part due to the fact that methanol is corrosive. So it's a very difficult liquid to deal with in a system like that. We also have a spray bar, so, which sprays water over the uh, oil cooler and radiator to keep the uh, aircraft cool. It's simply not enough to have air flowing over it, over it, even at 500 miles an hour. It's not enough. You still have to spray water over the radiator. The race version of a Mustang is not half as nice to fly as a Cadillac stock P-51, if you will. The uh, P-51 is a very nice aircraft, very easy to fly, very straightforward, uh, comfortable, and, and ergonomic. Whereas a racer is built for one reason, one reason only, and that's to go fast. None of the other things matter. So they tend to be unstable, uh, they're cramped, they're hot, very hard to see out of, uh, very inconvenient to operate in every way, shape, or form. Um, but that's the price you pay for going fast. So no compromises, straight, purebred racehorse. People resent uh, the fact that World War II airplanes are being used for air racers. Uh, I couldn't agree more. There's no reason to chop up a valuable piece of history, a um, national treasure, if you will, for the purpose of air racing. And that's not done anymore. That hasn't been done for 30, 40 years. The airplanes you see in Reno have been that way for a long, long time, and they have a lot more history racing than they do as fighter planes. Many of them were actually never fighters. They were um, based stateside, and they were usually wrecks that were picked up and restored for the purpose of the racing. If racing didn't exist, most of these airplanes, they wouldn't even be flying today. They wouldn't exist. Um, the, uh, the notion that uh, we're chopping up and blowing up pieces and parts that belong to um, World War II airplanes should be put on display, that's simply not true. Flying precious metal is an incredible experience. It's, uh, it's been a hell of a ride, if you will. Uh, it's, um, the amount of attention the aircraft brings out in people is, is just unbelievable. The support and interest that it brings out, and uh, it, it, it elevates you to a, a level you're normally not accustomed to, um, which is very flattering and a lot of fun. Um, that being said, being involved in a project like this is an awful lot of work. It's not all glamour like it looks like in the, the videos and the pictures and you know, the parties after the races, etc. There's so much more to it. We're uh, you know, slaving 18 hours a day all summer long to make this happen. And it's a team effort. It's not just me. It's a large group of people to make this happen. Everybody's interested and, uh, and uh, they're putting way more effort in the, than, than I certainly deserve. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a neat ride. I hope it lasts. One who continue for a long time. When we acquired precious metal, the uh, paint job was due for replacement. So we stripped the airplane down, tried to come up with something cool, and on the right side of the cowling, there was a little Yosemite Sam looking guy. So it was a prospector because it was precious metal. We decided to keep the name of the airplane, but uh, he was a little old and haggard, worn out, so it was time to retire him. So we tried to come up with something good. At the same time, a good friend of mine in Reno, Albie Reddick, who runs Aviation Classics up there, said that he wanted to feature precious metal on the t-shirt for Reno 2011, Miss Reno 2011. So we decided, well, why don't we just put her on the side in a prospector outfit and uh, renew the uh, whole look of the airplane a little bit. So there she is, Miss Reno 2011. There was a lot of uh, extraordinary artwork on the side of fighters and bombers in World War II, obviously to raise boost their morale and um, entertain the troops, if you will. And uh, 
that tradition has lived on, obviously, in, in uh, fighters and bombers displayed on the, on the air, air race and air show circuit, which is a really neat tradition. I mean, what's more American than a pretty girl and a fighter? It doesn't get any better than that. From Precious Metal, we're excited to be a part of the Warbird Pinup Girls 2013 All Mustangs Edition. Good luck to the two.